Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be talking about singularities and residues of f of z. So we haven't defined what a residue is, but the goal of this uh, video is to establish this, this idea of a residue. Um, and a residue is not, not something that will be unfamiliar. It's something we've been working with for a while now. We're just actually sort of uh, giving uh, a, uh, an uh, important uh, an important thing a name. And I'll, I'll show you what that important thing is in a bit. I'm not going to hold it off too long. But before we do so, I want to just establish a few things about singularities. We've been dealing a lot with singularities of our function of a complex variable. And uh, we, we've known now from, uh, 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 from studying a Laurent series, we have ways of actually capturing or expanding the function about a singularity and representing aspects of it. So a residue, of course, is going to be a uh, an important idea involving uh, Laurent series, especially dealing with uh, notions of singularities of a function f of z. So let's uh, before we get before we get started on defining what a residue is, I just want to talk about what what we mean when we talk about singularities. And so we got basically uh, two issues here. One is we want to talk about the idea of an isolated singular point. Uh, for instance, if I have a z naught is a, is a singular point, uh, what we want to do is be able to, if, I, if z naught sitting there in the plane, I want to be able to draw some sort of a disk, a disk uh, around z naught, and we'll call it a deleted neighborhood, deleted neighborhood from z naught, some epsilon that uh, contains uh, no other uh, uh, singularity points. We have to be able to find some epsilon that, uh, that, uh, that has no singularity points except for z naught inside of it. Uh, and so the idea here is if I have some function with uh, you know, points like that, where these are the isolated singularity points, z1, z2, z3, z4, z5, and then z6. Okay, so these, these are, of course, um, points, and I can draw little neighborhoods around them, and there's no other points around. So even if you have two points that are really close together, all right, I can still draw little neighborhoods around each, and, of course, I'm happy. Okay, so uh, the idea, then, is that uh, uh, we have this sort of thing. And, and uh, in, in, so that, that's what we call an isolated singular point, of course. So, and this is what we really want to study today. So of course you know you know what's the alternative? How how do you does one uh, create a, a non isolated singularity point? Uh, how, a non isolated singularity. Of course we have. Okay, the idea is that we take a sequence z n of uh, singularities. Okay, and so that again is going to be a sequence. I can put it in brackets like that. And I say, you know, the limit of Zn is going to some sort of, is equal to, as n goes to infinity, is equal to some w that's, a, um, that's a, you know, it's less than infinity. It's not the point at infinity. And of course, that means that w is an accumulation point. Of the set Zn, okay? So the idea here is we have some singularity points that go like that, and eventually they they all sort of accumulate around this point right there, and then there's some W that's sitting there, and, and I can draw a neighborhood around W right there, but it's always going to contain uh, some ZNs in it. All right, and so we're talking about if, if there's an accumulation point. All right, so uh, what kind of functions are we talking about with singularities? So we're, we're talking about singularity points. And we know, uh, you know, we have, you know, let's talk about certain functions like f of z is equal to uh, z minus 1 and z minus i. Okay, so this function, of course, has uh, two isolated singularities. It has one at 1 and then another one at i, right? All right, and of course they're isolated because I can draw uh, little disks around them. All right, and of course this function has um, 
We've studied this function before, uh, and, and clearly the function's you know not uh, defined at uh, z equals one or i. All right, and that's what we mean by a singularity of a function. Okay, um, so that that just gets us uh, an example of what we're talking about. So now let's go back to uh, um, let's go back to discussing uh, what a residue is. So now we can, now that we've got that nomenclature down, let's talk about a residue. Okay, so suppose we have some function and we can represent it by a uh, power, a Laurent series. So I write down this Laurent series and there's the Taylor part of the series. And I'm going to say it's at expanded about z naught, and we have the Taylor part of the series, which is a, a like this, right? Okay, so that's the Taylor part. Okay, and and then what we have here is the uh, plus. We have another series, and that's going to start at n equals one to infinity of b n. And that's going to be z minus z naught to the negative n. All right. All right. So I can rewrite this a bit. I'm just going to sum this up here. Keep the Taylor part compact. And then I'm going to break this out. I'm going to, I'm going to, there is, of course, the b1 over z minus z naught. Then there's a plus b2, z minus z naught. Uh, squared plus b3 z minus z naught third and so on and so forth on forever. All right, um, so we've seen already that this first term here plays a really important role in a lot of things. So in fact, if we write uh, the bn's down, it's going to be 1 over 2 pi i integral over some contour that surrounds z naught, okay? of f of s, of s minus z naught. I think some, we'll just use z there instead, just to keep things clean. Uh, we're, uh, to the minus n plus one dz. Okay, so with this integral, all right, so let's look at now, uh, and so that, that can generate all of these bn's, all of these right here, okay? All of those are, are computed in, in this following manner. But now, of course, let's examine uh, B1. Okay, B1, of course, is going to be n, the n equals 1 value. And when I put that in, that's 1 over 2 pi i, integral of some contour that's in the domain of analyticity of our function, but uh, is surrounding that, singular, that isolated singular point. All right, in which case, if I put... Uh, n equals 1 in there, of course, this exponent becomes 0, so we actually just have the integral of f of z dz. So, of course, that is a very, uh, a very important coefficient that we're looking at right there. All right, and actually, we, this has a name. This is called the residue uh, of f, and we, and we say the residue of f at z equals z naught. So, of course, we say residue of f of z at z equals z naught. That's how we talk about it. So this is the symbol we use to describe it, and that symbol merely corresponds to this corresponds to that this coefficient. So it's the coefficient on the on the term with the first power singularity. Okay. So um, this residue, of course, is it, it turns out to be incredibly important uh, for. Um, for a lot of things, and so uh, let's just understand why why we why is it so important that we actually gave it a name? Uh, and of course, we we've seen this before that if I have um, uh, a, so if I have some contour integral of one over z minus z to the n power, uh, um, uh, I'm going to call that the k power now just to. So that z naught, and this is going around z naught. So I have some contour. Uh, C Z naught that's enclosing Z naught, okay? All right, and we know that this is uh, equal to uh, 2 pi I when K 
k is equal to 1, and it's equal to 0 else. So of course, that is the, the residue of f of um, z is equal to 1 over z over z naught. Okay, we see, uh, um, sorry, uh, that's going to be, this is equal to the residue uh, 2 pi i times <laughs> the residue, the residue of f of z of this. So we see that's the residue. So the residue of 1 over z minus z naught uh, uh, at z equals z naught is going to be equal to 1, right? Uh, and so uh, what we see when we're, we're computing integrals like this, we're actually looking for uh, the, the how, how much uh, divided by 2 pi i, what, what, what that number is that comes out of this integral. We see that's very important, and this is just central to a lot of things that we're doing here. So we gave it that special name. And it's the one power that accumulates something. So if it was any other power, k is some other power besides 1, uh, nothing comes of it. Okay, so that's why we, we have a special name for it, this residue. And of course, we're going to see a lot of important theorems that are all talked about and discussed in terms of this, these residues. Okay, so, um, so that's the definition. It's simply B1. Okay, so now let's, uh, let's just do a few uh, ex examples of how to compute residues for different functions. And, uh, and then we'll call, it, call the video. All right, so let's talk about the function f of z is equal to z squared sine 1 over z. Okay, so, uh, so one thing we can do is, of course, uh, actually, you know, we want, so the residue then uh, of, this, of, this, um, uh, of this function, I'm going to look, so this has, this has a domain of analyticity wherever z is not equal to 0. That's our problem, right? So I'm looking for a residue um, of this thing, and I want to. Uh, um, so I want to find out how to compute that. So, so uh, well, one thing we could do is actually compute. We can actually compute this integral. So um, uh, um, we can actually compute this integral right here. So uh, 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 we can uh, so sorry I'm uh, just having a little little brain breakdown here so um, yeah so we can compute the one over two pi i um, of of uh, f of z dz so I want to compute the residue of this right here okay that, so that's the re the definition of a residue and this is going to be for z equals zero because that's my point that I'm interested in. Right, so I'm, my, my contour is going to go around uh, that point zero in the plane. All right, uh, so first of all, I don't have a really good way of, uh, of computing this, so I'm actually going to have to use some other means. I can't actually use a direct computation uh, of, of this integral to do it. So what I'm going to do is actually try to be a little clever here. Okay, so what I, I'm going to do is I'm going to actually create a power series representation for it. So first of all, let's look at the part. So we have to really break down Uh, uh, f by uh, its components. So I would say this is, uh, so sometimes you can do it easily by direct computation, and sometimes you have to uh, use a little bit more cleverness. So first of all, we, we're going to remember that sine of z, so that of course is one of the components to our function. It has a Taylor series about z equals zero, equal to the following, n equals um, uh, uh, um, n equals 0 to infinity of z to the 2n plus 1 power all over 2n plus 1 factorial times uh, this alternating series to the n power. Okay, um, so so that is our power series for z, okay, for sine z, sorry. Uh, the next thing we want to do, of course, is then, what I want to do is then invert the input and make it 1 over z wherever I have a z here, 
and then times it by and multiply it by z squared. So we're going to do that. We have a z squared sine 1 over z. So we're going to do that is put that z squared sitting out front, put my summation just like before. And then I have that uh, 2n plus 1 factorial in the bottom just like before. I have that minus 1 to the n power just like before. And now where we saw where we had a z, now I'm going to put a or 2n plus 1. I'm going to put a 1 over z in there. Okay, it looks pretty good. And now I'm going to distribute in. This z squared is going to come inside the sum. So what we have is, and I'm going to keep that z squared outside actually for just a little while. Let's get this thing uh, just looking a little bit better. Okay, and then we have down here a, I can put the z in the denominator, a now at 2n plus 1. All right, so now I'm going to distribute in that z uh, squared inside. All right, so I have this series of coefficients here, and now I have a uh, z squared all over z 2n plus 1. Okay, and now I just got to simplify this expression here. Oh, sorry, that's a factorial there. Uh, and then, of course, so, so, uh, so what I have is a z squared uh, z minus 2 and minus 1. And so I'm going to add 2 to that, and that makes a z minus 2 and plus 1. 1. So that makes, then when I put that back in the denominator, I get a z uh, 2n minus 1 in the denominator. Okay, so again, I can write this as now, if I have, so what I'm looking at here is I want to find the term that, uh, that delivers me uh, uh, the, the correct uh, what I want to look for then, of course, is the, the coefficient b1 of z to the first power. And there'll be stuff on either side of it. I don't care about that stuff. I'm just looking for that, the coefficient corresponding to the, to the, to the negative 1 power, or the, uh, the, the, where the first power in the denominator. And of course we see that if I make n is equal to 1, that's the power. So of course then if I look at this up here, b1 of course is going to be negative 1 to the 1, then I evaluate, put n equals 1 in there, 2n, so sorry, that'll be 1, so 2 times 1 plus 1, that of course is uh, equal to uh, uh, 3 factorial, so that'll be uh, negative 1 over 3 factorial. Okay, so that is in fact the, uh, the, the residue associated with um, with associated with this particular function about the function the residue at the point z equals zero okay so that's really nice so now let's do one more example to close this out so again I'm gonna I'm now gonna look at a function uh, that you know let's look at like a transfer function type thing. And transfer functions are some sort of polynomial, 1 over some polynomial, z, uh, z minus 2 to the fourth power. Okay, I want to find a residue of t of z at z is equal to 2. Okay, we see that there's a singularity at z is equal to 2. Okay, all right, so there's a singularity there, and I want to compute that. So here I'm actually going to use a direct uh, a computation. All right, again, so b1 is going to be equal to 1 over 2 pi i. Um, is uh, times this, 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 uh, um, Sorry, I, I shouldn't put that 2 pi i there. We'll just leave that alone. Um, uh, no, no. Because I'm going to use Cauchy's integral form. It should be there. 
Cauchy's integral formula has that in there. So that'll be over uh, the contour that's going around 2. So I'm putting that contour there, and it's going to be surrounding 2. But one thing it won't be surrounding is 0, because 0 is our other singularity point. So there's z equals 0 is also a singularity. Okay. Uh, so here's our, 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 our point. So we want a contour C2 that's surrounding just that point right there. And what we have then is I can, I can rewrite this as z, z minus 2 uh, to the fourth power, dz. All right, so uh, uh, this is, uh, we can use Cauchy's integral formula here. So that's 1 over 2 pi i integral c2. And I can put that 1 over z in the numerator. And of course, it's going to be analytic anywhere in this domain over here because the singularity is far away. It's not being enclosed by the function itself. So we have this, z to the fourth power, dz. Right, the next thing I want to do then is, um, is then uh, use Cauchy's integral formula, which, state that, which states that, um, uh, that, uh, um, that this thing here is equal to uh, 1 over z triple prime, evaluated that z is equal to 2, uh, uh, all over n, uh, uh, sorry, 3 factorial. Okay, so that is the, that's, the, that's the value of this integral, so that's equal to b1. All right, so of course we just have to take uh, three derivatives, three derivatives, so here's our triple prime, and that's going to be equal to uh, 1 over z squared double prime, okay? And that'll be equal to uh, 2 over z to the third power, single prime, which is, of course, equal to 3 factorial minus 3 factorial z to the fourth power. All right, so the next thing I want to do, of course, is evaluate this at z is equal to 2. Uh, in which case we have a negative 3 factorial all over um, 2 to the 4th, which is a 16. The next thing, of course, we do is divide by 3 factorial, which cancels those out. And that means that v1 is equal to negative 16. So that is what we call the residue of our function t at z is equal to 2. All right, so there we go. That is, our, um, that is how we compute residues. So again, we're going to find out, uh, now that we have this terminology and we've just had some practice computing it, what we're going to do next then is, um, is to show some other results that are now talked about and discussed in terms of these residue values. Okay, thank you very much.